know, I guess it's it's always been the same. I I just get excited and I, I I can't sleep at night. And even when I do get to sleep, I wake up well before the sun, just frothing to be heading bush on a new adventure, just getting back out and doing it all over again. I remember, you know, growing up as a young tacker, I would have been eight or ten years old, and we had a we had a motorbike back then, and my dad and I used to get on that motorbike with all our bits and pieces and the dog and we'd head off for a few days down the south coast fishing and exploring and I didn't have any possessions back then I was bloody eight ten years old I might have had a jumper and a cup <laughs> and a pocket knife but I'd put all those things into a into a bag and I'd put them next to my bed keep an eye on them make sure no one touched them and I'd go to bed try to get to sleep wouldn't be able to sleep wake up early I'd get dad up come on we're gonna go we're gonna go we're going bush let's go get on that motorbike and we'd head bush and all these years later you know still froth. Last night I didn't sleep. I finally went to sleep and I woke up before the sun this morning and all day yesterday I was just checking the stuff in the floor to make sure I packed it right where I wanted it, repack it. It's just that froth that keeps me going just to be able to jump in my truck and just go bush, go exploring, go for a surf, go for a hunt, go for a fish, do whatever it is. But I guess at the end of the day it's all just an excuse for me to be going bush. I love it out there and I don't want that to ever change. If I lose that froth, well, it's time to give it away. We've just turned onto Pneumonia Road, significant for two reasons. First and foremost, it means the end of the blacktop. Secondly, that word, pneumonia. <laughs> we are right in the middle of winter here in the southwest. We've just come off the back end, actually, a real cold spell. That kind of old school winter that I remember as a kid, you know, temperatures below 10 degrees, windy, raining, just fantastic in the countryside is loving it, starting to come back, it's nice and green. This time of year is not exactly the time of year you'd usually associate with heading into the deep south, down to the coastal regions. And I understand that, it's wet, it's windy, it's cold, it's gonna rain, we've got rain right now in fact, and we've got more rain forecast for tonight, but as far as I'm concerned, this is just another time of year. And it's a time of year that this part of the country really shines in my opinion. Another thing I love about it, the wind, the rain, the cold, tends to keep people away a bit. So you can get down here on a weekend, today's Saturday, you can get down here on a weekend into some really popular spots and have it all to yourself. And I'm gonna prove that point. Heading into two areas over the next couple of days. Gosh, there's some kangaroos down here. I think it's that rain. Heading into two areas over the next couple of days that are real popular. They're not secret spots. And the locals down here know them well. But I reckon I'm gonna have them to myself. And given the weather conditions, I think it's gonna be pretty, pretty special. I'm gonna hunker down Gonna roast on tonight, get a big fire going, and just enjoy this part of the country at a time of year when most people would say no thanks and stay at home. Apparently a long way from camp, but I'm just keeping my eyes peeled because this side of the track it's national park and this side of the track it's a wood collection zone a firewood collection zone so just keep my eyes open here because I know once I get into the national park collecting wood it's gonna be a oh, typical big old log down there but it's on the wrong side of the road I know once I get into the park it's gonna be a lot more difficult to collect wood and I just want to grab some for tonight because it is gonna be bitterly cold so I'll grab some firewood before we even get started I think Keep me going for a while. There's a couple of different types of wood down here. Us locals, we try and burn this stuff here. Of course, that's none other than West Australian Jarrah. Nicely dried out. Burns long and burns hot. It's just a really good source of wood. Now, the campsite I'm going into tonight does provide wood, but I'm planning on getting in. Look at that bad boy. I'm planning on getting in a little bit late tonight, so I'm going to use these just for my evening fire. I'm going to do something else for my cooking fire tonight, but it's always good to have a bit of Jarrah on board. That's cool. Let's get going. This is what I've been waiting for. Turning off that pneumonia road, high speed gravel. You get onto the sandy tracks now. Middle of summer, this track through here can be really, really soft. All of had some experiences. This time of year, 
it's middle of winter. We've had a significant amount of rainfall. I reckon you'd almost get it in two wheel drive, but there are some sections where you've got to give it a bit of right boot, and that's when, if you're in two wheel drive, you start to cut it up, it causes corrugations. No way I'm going to do that. So I've already let my tyres down. You don't need to see that, that's boring. I've locked the hubs in, you all know how to do that. I'm going to enjoy a drive in. All through this track out here, you're going to find these big, thick puddles. Now, this time of year, some are deeper than others, some are quite shallow, but if you stick to the track, because the track gets a lot of use, it's generally the hardest part of the entire thing. And so you don't usually run into any problems. But, I have been stuck out here before, so I'm not going to say anything just yet. Yeah, the time of our lives, it was all about fun. We were the kids, it was all about fun. Lake Wilson, freshwater lake. Now, I'm pulling in here because I really want to show you something, a contrast, if you will. Oh, look at this, will you? Geez, water level's up. This is fantastic. Check this out. <laughs> Have a go at that, will you? What a sight. This right here is Lake Wilson. Now, the reason I wanted to stop here and have a look at this is for a contrast between where we're going to head to next. You see, Lake Wilson and the one just down from it here, and there's a third one, a little tiny one further up. You can't actually get into it with your Forby. They're all freshwater lakes. You can drink this water, but like a lot of the water in the southwest of WA, as I've told you before, it's full of tannins, and so it makes the water a really black, a really dark colour. However, in amongst this is something really, <laughs> really bloody special. If this wasn't special enough, wait until you see what I've got in store for you next. That's not bloody spectacular. I don't know what is. Truly tremendous. Now, just for the record, folks, you're not allowed to camp at either one of those two lakes. You saw one on the drone footage, and the one we just stopped at then. Officially, you're not allowed to camp there, but I have seen people camping there, especially during the summer months when this part of the world gets crazy busy. It's a beauty of coming down here in the middle of winter. Pretty much sure we'll have it to ourselves. There's a set of tyre tracks in front of me. Peak hour, it's got me concerned. There's one other track in here. A lot of trees down too, look at this. Big storms we've had through here. But, so far, so good. Let's keep plugging on. These planks that we're going over right now, they're big. Jarrah boards were put in place decades ago and they were to give access during winter floods to the opposite side of where we're headed right now. Give you an idea about rainfall and changes. I haven't seen this track flooded, not permanently anyway, for a very, very decades. A little bit of a log over the track here, which means no one's been through here for a while. I don't know how I'm going to go get out of this one. Give it a It's pretty rotten, so I might just keep away underneath the tyres. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, hang on, I'm not over yet. Some idiot's put a camera in the middle of the track. Uh, look at this numpty. Look at this, look at this numpty. Who puts a camera in the middle of the track? Eh? Yeah. Well, this little piece of paradise right here is called Lake Jasper. I've been coming down here for decades and decades. This is actually Western Australia's largest freshwater lake. Uh, it's a, average is about three metres deep, so it's not real deep. Its deepest point is 10 metres right out in the middle. And unlike, what makes it so special is, unlike those lakes we were just at, just to the south of here, this one is crystal clear. I'm the only one here. There's no tracks coming in. I've got this entire thing to myself. The weather's beautiful, a little bit chilly, but pretty good. If you ever get a chance, folks, honestly, 
get on down here and check out Lake Jasper. Bring a chair, put it right about here, make sure it's about 40 degrees, sit here with a cold beer, let the tin lids go nuts in there. Tell you what, Lake Jasper, she's an absolute pearl. If Lake Jasper reminds you of anything, especially if you come from up that Queensland way and you spend a bit of time on that big island just off the coast of Australia, that Fraser Island, if that reminds you of anything, maybe that Lake Mackenzie, for good reason. They're very, very similar bits of kit. So that right there, oh, look at that. That is WA's version. On a day like today, yeah, well, you'd freeze yourself into tomorrow jumping in there, but middle of summer, that is the place to be. now. I'm rapidly running out of light here because I've taken me time and had a bit of fun getting in here. My campsite's about an hour's drive from here and I was really hoping to show you it tonight, or around it anyway, but I don't think I'm going to get a chance to do that. So I'm going to get set up, get a fire going, get me dinner on, I'll show you all that of course. Crack a cold beer and tomorrow morning I'm going to show you, oh boy, one of my favourite campsites in Australia. But for now, i got to get there, we've got a fair old drive ahead of us, it's going to be bumpy. I probably won't film too much of it, we'll see how we go. Bumpy old track this one. This would be as good a time as any just to do as I always do and remind you all that this is a 100% solo effort. There's no one else involved and so I got to thinking about that the other day over a cold beer as one does. And I figured I haven't come up with a name for this yet. We're up to about episode three and I ain't got a name. And it came to me in a blinding flash. So ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to episode three, a late warm welcome, but a warm welcome nonetheless to episode three of Oz Solo. It's just me, that's the solo part, and with a bit of luck, we're going to go all over Australia together. So sit back, grab something cold, I'm about to do the very same thing as soon as I get in the camp, and enjoy episode three, belated, should have done this at the beginning, of Oz Solo. Shoo. Boy, that piece of wildness out there, that is Jasper's Beach. Now, I had romantic ideas of camping down there on the beach. That's not gonna happen. In fact, I'm gonna get down, turn around, come back up. And there's a lovely little campsite just uh, back up here in the peppermint trees. It's getting late, I'm losing light. And that, that is no place for old men. Whew, I'm out of here. <laughs> not half bad. I'd like to formally apologise for not showing you the camp being set up, but heck, you've all seen camps being set up before, you didn't need to see that. Now, one of the issues I've always had getting into camp late on the south coast is the wood you collect invariably is always wet. We've had that much rain out here. Now, it'll go. I'm going to get a decent fire tonight, but I'm doing a roast tonight, roast chicken. And if I wanted to use the coals, oh man, I'd be sitting here for another two, three hours, tops. And then I've got another hour on top of that to cook. So there's a little trick I use whenever I come down here. I always keep it in the back of the truck so that I can get cooking regardless of what my fire's doing and still have a roast. And it's no rocket science, but I'll give you a look at exactly what that is when I finish my beer. Cheers, by the way. Alright, 
That'll learn me. Figured I should pull my finger out. I'm getting hungry. Doing roast chicken tonight, just with veggies. There's no rocket science behind that. You've all seen that before. But if I wait for that fire to produce coals, I won't be eating until breakfast tomorrow morning. It just takes that long with this kind of wood when it's wet like this. So here's a bit of a thing I do when I'm out here before I go away. I always carry just a bag like that. It's all I take, just a bag like that. I'll give you a look. Charcoal. Now this is lump charcoal. It's not heat beads, it's actually lump charcoal, which is actual plant material. And burnt down, it actually burns. It's amazing stuff and it's, I don't know. I don't mind heat beads, I've got no problem with them. But once you've cooked with lump charcoal, there's a whole heap in here. Once you've cooked with lump charcoal, you'll never go back. It's dirty stuff and it's hard to light unless you carry one of these bad boys with you. Now, <laughs> this weird looking contraption, I don't know what you'd even call it, it's like a chimney or something, I don't know, but you put your charcoal in here, then you screw up some newspaper, pop that underneath there, it's got a bit of a trap there, you pop your newspaper up underneath there, you light that bad boy, you leave it for about 10 minutes, and trust me when I say there'll be sparks shooting out the top of this, then, well I'll show you what you do with it after that, but what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get that started, whilst that's burning and catching that charcoal alight, I'm going to prepare my veggies, drink another beer, and then I'll get my camp oven going. That means that within an hour of getting into camp, I'm started cooking. Another hour after that, I've eaten. I'll wait for that fire. I'll be an old man with grey hair. Yeah. You, shh. Don't st Looky that, mama. All right, that's been about 15 minutes, and I've preheated the camp oven just by putting it in there next to that. Whee, it's some warmth in there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna put just a few down the bottom here, nothing too special, just a few. Just on the bottom there. Might get that big bad boy out of there because I'm gonna use him. Spread them out, good pair of gloves, really handy. Just gonna whack that on top. That, get my handle out of the way, and then just tip the top on. Try and get most of it on there if I can. As you can see, there's some fairly serious heat there. I'll pop him back on top. You too, you're not getting away. Nor are you. Give that about an hour, and I'm ahead of the game. If I was to disturb that fire now and try and drag coals out of there, because the wood's kind of a bit wet, a bit how you're going, I'd really be behind the eight ball. So if you want to speed things up, especially if you've got kids, you want to get to eating real quick, just take a bag of charcoal with you, grab yourself one of these bad boys, and honestly, one of the best investments you'll make, you can already, can you hear that? You can already hear that starting to sizzle, you probably can't over the waves and the wind, but that's already starting to go. In fact, I'm going to have to be careful, I haven't put too much heat on that. I'll give it half an hour and check it. Half an hour. About a bit. <laughs> boy. And there's enough left for lunch tomorrow. I'm sorry I didn't do the unveiling. I don't believe in that. Now you'll notice that I've got two lots here. I've got an entire other serving in the camp oven, which is wow, really hot. That is for lunch tomorrow. I always do that in the bush so that when I'm moving around, I can do it real quick. I've got a 12 volt oven in there. I'll show you that tomorrow, maybe if I get taste. But everything there will go into the 12 volt oven tomorrow for lunch. Tonight though, I'm about to sit down in front of the fire and enjoy roast chicken and it is just starting to rain which if you ask me is perfect cheers folks what a fantastic day so stoked to be out here As campsites go last night's was right up there you know I don't know what it is but if you could somehow put into a pill or bottle all the different ingredients that go into a night's sleep out in the bush you would make a bloody fortune the sound of the waves light rain on the old canvas there a camp oven meal a couple of beers and then getting into my swag I was out like a light and didn't wake up until this morning now there's a light mist just starting down in the south coast this is pretty common first thing in the morning it's not rain even it's like a 
I don't know, like a drizzle, but it's more misty. Makes everything wet, it's a bit of a pain. Um, so I'm just gonna sit back, have another cup of coffee, and wait for that to clear, because when I get up out of here, off this, this is that Jasper's Beach, or Jasper's campsite, I'm gonna turn and head up towards a place called Black Point, and I really wanna show you the view as soon as I turn to head towards that, because it's next level. I can't do that while it's raining, so I'm just gonna sit back, soak it all up. Well, that was a memorable night for a lot of reasons. All the conditions just came together. And one of my favorite bands just put out a new album yesterday and I picked it up before I left. So of course I spent the night <laughs> just playing that. Absolutely sensational. Now today, heading on towards Black Point and I'd really hope this weather would clear up so I could show you the view along here, but it hasn't. So what I might have to do is just wait until this afternoon so I can get you a bit of a look at that. But we'll still head in there anyway. These sand tracks out here. Main reason why you can't get up any speed on them is not because they're soft and not because they're corrugated. It's not really the right word for it. It's because there's these humps in them. Again, you'll get onto a patch like this, you know, you're almost up into third gear, are you? And then you'll come around a corner and you'll have to come straight back down into second or even first in a lot of cases because you've got to crawl over these little humpty do things. And I tell you what, they can get they can get a bit annoying, and when you hit them too hard, oh man, the entire canopy. This day when I go to the camp, there was shit everywhere. There was stuff upside down because I hit a couple a bit too hard because of course I was trying to get in before it got dark, which was a bit silly. <laughs> Have a go at this little mess here, will you? It's about that time of year where kangaroos around here are drinking Red Bull and vodka, if you know what I mean, and if you don't, well, have a go at this. One set of tracks coming in here, there's another set of tracks coming in here, a set going that way, and a set going that way. I reckon it's, uh, could be a few joeys jumping around in another few months, if you know what I'm getting at. There's marks all around here. Last night must have been a good night in the kangaroo nightclub. You! <laughs> Little spot I'm so keen to show you down here. It's called the Stepping Stones, but we've got to go back a bit. Maybe about 135 million years. You see, the whole Cape region, the whole southwest region is made up of limestone cliffs. That's why we get the caves that we get. A bit bumpy through here. That's why we get the caves we get. It's why our underground water supply is so pure because it's it's filtered through limestone. But right here at Black Point, everything changes. And we get that black basalt. And it was formed, and this blows my mind, was formed by lava from volcanoes flowing out into the ocean 135 million years ago. And it's only at this point that it did it. And that's why now we've got all of this black basalt through here. And it just looks amazing. Down the far end, a big black basalt columns. Can't get to them today due to the weather, which is unfortunate because they are a striking feature of Black Point, and it's actually what gives Black Point its name. If you ever get a chance, I can't urge you enough to get down here and check this place out for yourself. It is truly spectacular and utterly unique. I'm gonna go down for a bit of a wander around and have a look. I'm guessing this audio is gonna be pretty how you're going, but these are the stepping stones. And on a good day, the fishing down here off these rocks is next level. Today, today ain't a great day for fishing. But I'm so stoked that we got a break in the weather and I got to show you the stepping stones. I'm gonna take you to the other side of Black Point now. We're gonna go and have a look at where you will often see seals frolicking just off the rocks. But I reckon today, you'd have to be a bloody brave seal. <laughs> How spectacular is that, eh? Black Point blows my mind. We're now just gonna do a short drive just across to the other side of Black Point, the southern side of Black Point. Might be a bit more protected over there, we'll see, I doubt it. <laughs> Little spot over here called Surfer's Cove. Uh, the surf is absolutely shit down there and I don't recommend you even bother 
driving all the way out here. It's just hopeless surf, you'll never get a good wave, super crowded, just don't even bother with it. <laughs> For 20 nights and 20 days, I was drifting out of space, I turned away from every sound, from everything that shook my ground. Well that was bloody close. Flew me drone directly into a cliff. I managed to climb down and I looked across to my right and it was sitting directly on top of a bush so I got out of jail there. No damage to it apart from to my ego. Whew, I'm knackered. As a drone pilot, I should stick to four wheel driving. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay, black point. When I was a youngster, I was fishing out there, nearly fell off a rock. Would have landed me in the water about 100 metres below. Probably would have died. Nearly died surfing out there once. <laughs> Got held under for too long. <laughs> and now, nearly slid down a cliff face trying to get a drone back. Maybe I ought to stay away from Black Point for a little while. Nah, 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 nah. I love that place. And if you ever get a chance, folks, honestly, get out and check it. Because it is super unique on this stretch of coast to have that rock formation out there, those stepping stones, that black basalt. Folks, the facilities at Black Point are second to none. They've done such a good job down there. Back in the day when I first started coming down, we just used to camp under the peppy trees or down by the beach there. There was nothing down there. And I think it's a good thing that they're putting facilities like that in because it means that people are taking pride in that part of the world. There's zero rubbish down there, none. that trip we've just done there would make, in my opinion anyway, a pretty wicked long weekend. Even out of Perth, if you put in a bit of a day on Friday and got down here, a couple of nights down here and you'd really get to explore the area. Probably wouldn't recommend it in winter if you're not prepared just to sit it out like I was, if you want to try and maximise your time too. Summer definitely is the time to come down here, but pick your weekends, she gets busy, real busy. But if you can, get down midweek, in the off season, and really explore. I wonder where that track goes. Really explore, because there's some spots down here that I haven't taken you to yet, that are just as good, if not better. The Black Point, Lake Jasper, get in, have a look at it, stay a night, stay two nights, heck, stay a week. See if you can't catch a fish, and enjoy the very best of the Southwest. For me, however, this bridge right here signifies exactly where I turn off. See, I'm gonna head inland. I'm gonna spend a couple of nights up on the Donnelly River. So. That's it from me. Thanks so much for coming along. Might see you again on the next one, eh? For now, you remember, work to live. Maybe living to work. That's a mug's game. <laughs> the time of our lives, it was all about fun. We were the kids, it was Dry. all about fun. Oh, yeah. turned the wrong way. My apologies, please. Turn around and go back. Who's the local here? <laughs> oh yeah, you're still on, aren't you? Always watching me, you are. You won't get out of here. We were the kids, it was all about fun.